Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're gonna do a fun little project. We're gonna build a LiPo discharger and a LiPo killer. You know, every now and then it's fun just to make a homemade thing. I know you can go out and buy discharges on the market. There's the FD100, the FD200, the Sky RC unit, but it's also fun to build your own stuff. And once you learn how to build your own stuff, you can come up with contraptions like this one, which I call the Admiral. This device is capable of discharging 18 amps. For now, I'm gonna show you a really simple little unit that's meant to discharge a battery all the way down to storage, and it will also kill a battery if you need to retire one. Before we assemble this unit, let's talk a little bit about pricing. I bought all of my equipment on amazon.com with the exception of my step-down converter. Amazon likes to sell things in bulk and I only needed one, so I got my step-down converter at Race Day Quads. What you're looking for here is about a 30 volt to 12 volt step-down converter. That's what I used. I found mine at Race Day Quads for $7. Otherwise, everything else came off of Amazon. I've got the LiPo voltage alarm, and again, they sell these in bulk. I went ahead and ordered five of these, but I did find a single version of one of these for $5.49, only it didn't have the black case. But you can get this for $5.49. The two cooling fans, are kind of important to use these because they're a functional part of the unit. So I got copper cooling fans because they are going to act as a heat sink in addition to doing the cooling work. The resistors, this is a two pack. These are eight ohm, 100 watt resistors, aluminum housing. I've got them wired together right now because before we assemble it, I'm going to show you how they perform. Before the video, I assembled this pigtail, but I will go through these elements in detail in the build. It's basically an XT60 connector with 14 gauge wire and my little step down converter and a little bit of heat shrink. That's about it. You'll need four M3 by 50 millimeter screws and eight washers and eight nuts to go along with those screws. And of course, you'll need a LiPo battery to discharge, but that's not really part of the assembly. This is just something you should have in your stash. I'll be using a 6L1800 for demonstration purposes. This is a little resistor calculator that I built some time ago. I will have a link to this calculator in the description if you'd like to download a copy and use it for yourself. But all you have to do is in this calculator, put in the number of resistors you wanna use here, the ohm value of those resistors and the watt rating. As you can see in my case, I'm using two eight ohm resistors. So in the spreadsheet, I put in the number two and under ohms, I put in eight. And then under a watt rating, these are 100 watts each. So 100 watts. And then the calculator does the rest. It'll populate this table that shows what'll happen when you connect a load to these resistors in parallel and in series if you wanna do that. Now remember Ohm's law, volts divided by resistance equals amps. So if I take a two cell battery that's charged at 4.2, that's the peak, 4.2 per cell, that means I've got a total voltage on that pack of 8.4 volts. If I divide that by my resistance of four, remember two eight ohm resistors in parallel is four ohms of resistance. So if I divide 8.4 by four, that means I should discharge my 8.4 volt battery at about 2.1 amps. And the same goes for a six cell battery at 25.2 volts, which is the peak current, that's 4.2 times six cells. We divide that by four ohms of resistance. That means I should see about 6.3 amps of current drain when I connect the battery to these resistors. Now remember, if you hold your resistance constant, which we're going to do, the resistance doesn't change. It's four ohms. It might change a little bit due to heat, but by and large, it's gonna stay pretty constant at four ohms. That means during the discharge, as voltage comes down, so will the amperage. That's to be expected. Now let's do a little demonstration just to prove the point. I've got these two resistors connected in parallel already. I'm just gonna connect the leads to my power supply. One on each side. Remember with parallel, you connect the reds together and the blacks together. So I've got these connected in parallel. The next thing we'll do is apply power for my desktop power supply. I've got it set to output 8.4 volts. So when I turn the output on, we should see somewhere around 2.1 amps on the meter. So there's power. And there we go, 2.038 amps, that's pretty close. Let's go ahead and run it up to 12.6 volts. And at 12.6 volts, we should see somewhere around 3.2 amps, and I see about 3.1 if we round a little bit, so it's close. We'll do one more test at 16.8 volts. And at 16.8 volts, we should see about 4.2 amps, and I'm seeing about 4.1. So we're right in the ballpark. That's Ohm's Law. 
All right, I think that's enough theory. Let's get down to business. The assembly on this is actually very easy, and it just so happens that the fans work really great with these resistors. So what we're going to do is we'll start out with the fans. We're going to just pick one of the fans, and I also want to point out that I've already cut the ends off the fans. Mine came with these little white connectors. Just cut them off. We don't need those. Now to get started with the build, all we have to do is take our screws, and I've already got some nuts on the bottom. This acts as a pressure point against the fan, and it also gives me a little fan leg to keep the fan off the table. So notice I've got the screw, a nut, and a washer. We're just going to drop that in the little hole right there, just like that. We'll do that all on all four corners. And when that's done, we'll tip it over and set it down on the table. And with our legs installed, all we have to do is add our resistors. The cool thing about this setup, those resistors line up perfectly on these holes, so it works out just right. And we'll drop the second resistor on. Now, it's not a bad idea if you have it to use a thermal paste here to help with heat transfer. When I built the Admiral here, I did use thermal epoxy. You can see the white beads right there on the heat sink between the heat sink and the resistor. Not a bad idea to do that, but I really don't think it's strictly necessary in this case, as long as you make good mechanical contact between the heat sink and the heat sink on the resistor. Anyway, with our post installed, the next thing we'll do is just drop our second fan down on top. And with the second fan in, we'll put our washers on. One washer on each post. And then finally, we'll drop one of the M3 nuts on each post as well. Now, once you've got your top fan on, the idea is to use a wrench and a driver and sandwich this together. You don't have to monkey fist this. Keep in mind, this is aluminum. It's soft metal. If you really wrench it down, it's going to bend. You don't need to do that. You just need a good mechanical contact. That's it. And then the other thing you want to do is work on keeping these screws down at the bottom about the same size so it sits flat on the table. And once you think you have everything settled, just take a look and make sure you don't see any white space in between the top of the resistor and the fan or the bottom of the resistor and the fan. You just want to make sure everything is flat and making good solid contact to the heat sinks. That looks pretty good to me. The next thing that we'll do is take our two fan wires and we're just going to wire them together. Take the two reds and connect those. You just give them a twist. like that, and then we'll take our two grounds and give them a twist, just like this. Next, we'll take a look at the pigtail for this device. Now, the reason we needed the step-down converter is that we have the ability to discharge up to six cell batteries. That's 25 volts, but our fans are only rated for 12 volts. We don't want to overspin those or cause damage, so we use a step-down converter to make sure the fans never see anything above 12 volts. In my case, I have a 12 to 30 volt in, so I've connected the ground wire here and the hot wire here, and they simply go to the battery input on this side of the pigtail. And then we have a ground and output going to our fans. So these two wires are intended to connect to those fan leads. And then the only other thing that I did was add a little bit of heat shrink. I put this heat shrink on to act as a strain relief and keep this step down converter tight up against my pigtail. The next piece of heat shrink is meant to protect the converter itself from any damage or contact or any sharp points. We don't want anything poking through our silicone sheathing, and this heat shrink actually came with the converter. So I'll just slide that in place just like that. Then the next piece of heat shrink will be the ones that cover our leads going to the fans themselves. So I put one on the positive wire and then one on the negative wire. Just like that. And then we have a final piece of heat shrink that will wind up going over the whole thing and that'll keep the other side of this connectivity from moving around and causing stress on our joints. Okay, so that's the pigtail. Very simple. All we're really doing here is putting a step-down converter in line so that we can power our fans. All right, 
Now we're ready to make the connection to our fans. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take this lead off of my converter and I'm gonna bend that into the shape of a U, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on my fan lead. Just gonna bend that into the shape of a U as well. And then I'm just gonna give them a little twist just to get a little mechanical linkage going on there. And with our fan lines mechanically linked and pinched, I'm just gonna solder them together now. You can use other types of connectors if you want. I like to solder things because I think it just gives the cleanest overall appearance, especially when you get that heat shrink in place. All right, that's the hot wire. Next up is the ground. We'll do the same thing, just make a little bit of a U on both wires, a loop, and then we'll interlock those together and we'll give it a little twist. Okay, a little twist in place. Next we can add some solder. And then we can start getting our heat shrink in place. So I'll slide these two guys in their spot. And we'll give them a quick hit. Then we'll slide the larger piece over those joints. Again, create some strain relief. That's all I'm looking for here is to keep everything nice and tidy and give these wires some strain relief. Now we can heat shrink our converter. And then finally the last one for strain relief. You might notice that I went ahead and tinned these wires. I only did that to make it easier to work with them as I connect them to the resistors. Okay, so for wiring, you just put the ground on one side, your positive on the other, connect your reds to your reds, your black to your blacks on the fan, and that's it. Very simple wiring set up on this device. Now we can run a little bit of a test. I've got my power supply connected, and when I turn this on, we should see somewhere around 4.2 amps. So 4.13, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and drop it down to 12.6. And at 12.6, we should see about 3.2 amps. And that looks pretty good at about 3.1. All right, let's test it with a battery. My battery is already at storage state, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my alert for something a little bit lower, like 3.7. We'll do that by connecting the balance lead to the LiPo checker, and we get a tone. Then there's a button up top that you can press to set your cutoff voltage. Mine's gonna be set at 3.7 because I'm already at storage on these batteries. So we'll just set it down at 3.6, 3.7. There we go, 3.7. And then the next thing to do is connect it to the mains. Once we do that, our fan should start spinning and our discharger should go to work. And once we hit 3.7 volts on any cell, we will get a tone on this alarm. And there we go. Our discharge is done. All you have to do now is disconnect it from the discharger and disconnect the voltage alert. Now, if you wanna convert this discharger into a LiPo killer, that's very easy. Don't use your alarm and simply connect the battery 
to the discharger and this discharger will run this battery all the way down to nothing. And in case you didn't know, when you've completely discharged LiPo battery, it becomes inert. You can throw it away in your garbage can. All I recommend is that you run it all the way down to zero, check it with some form of voltmeter, cut the XT60 or whatever battery lead you have off, and then solder the negative to positive on the mains. And once you've done that, you can throw the battery right in your garbage can. It's now inert. Before I wrap this video up, I've got to give you a warning. This discharger does get a little bit hot. So it's a good idea if you use this device, make sure you keep an eye on it. Don't run it unsupervised and don't put it in a place where a child or some unsuspecting person can injure themselves by grabbing hold of it. Wouldn't be a bad idea to use a ceramic coaster on your desk because even though we've got little legs on the bottom, they get pretty hot too. So I'd hate to have you burn a hole in your desk. A little ceramic coaster does a great job though and that's all you need. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.